Hey there friends, what's going on? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and I have a lesson today which is gonna be an exercise showing you how you can take the major seventh arpeggio in just using one pattern. You can take that pattern, play it on the fifth fret, play it on the 10th fret, and you can bounce between the two and do cool little, little parallel riffs, right? So this is a really fun one. I have a PDF, Lesson 390, on my website, okay? It's gonna have all this written out. It's gonna give some recap in the first page or two. And then on the rest of the pages, I have all these riffs tabbed out. And the cool part about this is, hey, you take one shape, you take the notes in that shape. These are your building blocks. These are the toys you have in your sandbox. And I'm just gonna show you how to rearrange and use these toys to play many, many, many different licks and fills. I'm gonna show you different ways to be expressive, different ways to use sliding and do kinds of all kinds of cool stuff that is very beginner friendly. I'm getting into this myself. I'm not a, an expert here, but this is a way where I recommend not biting off, you know, more than you can chew. You just take one little digestible thing and I'm gonna show you how you can play using that. You can have so much fun. So I have a backing track as well that goes between the A major seventh chord and the D major seventh chord. And it's a great way to basically practice these riffs. And you just take one riff, you play it, you know, like I said, you play it you play it on the uh, A major seven position. You play it on the D major seven position. Um, so you learn a riff, you play it in both positions, the backing track keeps going. It's a great sort of canvas for you to paint within here to mix my metaphors. But let's get into this lesson. Thanks all for watching this far. Thanks to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon. I hope you find these PDFs helpful. Get the backing track over at my website and uh, let's get into this one, major seventh arpeggios. And I'll uh, see you all on the other side. Let's go. All right, friends, so before we get into learning these individual licks and fills and everything, I want to do a quick bit of recap about the major scale, how the major seventh arpeggio is constructed, um, talk about just, you know, how you can move the one shape to other frets, whether you're playing based on the A root note or the D root note. You're going to get a major seventh arpeggio either way. I'll talk about the backing track and how it's laid out. It's just four measures of each chord. Then I'll get into the riffs the licks and fills and show you, and I'll play each of these along with the backing track and show you how you can use these to really explore your lead guitar, just play, you know, have a sandbox of, of fun, okay? So let's get into this. If all this stuff I just described sounds like it's stuff you already know, you can skip ahead, but I wanna do a recap here just in case any of this is new to you. So um, in quick summary, this idea, the major scale, right? The major scale is constructed of the scale, de there's seven notes in the major scale, right? So we can use this term of scale degrees or intervals. And instead of referring to the notes by their absolute name, right? In the key of A, for example, we have A, B, C sharp, D, E, um, F sharp, G sharp, and A. Instead of using those actual note names, it's a lot easier if we just refer to the scale degrees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back to one. One is where it all starts again. So what I did right there is I just played this, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. I just followed this mapping. This mapping doesn't tell you what order to play the notes. This is more like, hey, here's the sort of notes you can play if we're sort of using this is the fifth fret, this is the fourth fret, this is the sixth, this is the seventh fret. But the fret numbers actually don't matter too much because you can play the major scale based on any note. For example, we could use the 10th fret for our lowest root note, okay? And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. That's a major scale in the key of D, okay? But if we go back to A, fifth fret, that's a major scale in the key of A. Um, if major scales are new to you, check out this other lesson. I've linked to it, lesson 384. It's all about the major scale positions, the caged chord shapes. It's kind of a lot to take in when you first look at it, but really, there's this idea of a repeating pattern all over the fretboard, okay? And there's these different places you can play the major scale, and they're named after the open chord positions and everything. So if this is all new to you, go check out that lesson because it's gonna give you some of the, um, the background there. The next thing we wanna keep in mind is how do we get from the major scale to the major seventh arpeggio? And what is an arpeggio? An arpeggio is simply a chord where the notes are played individually, okay? A major chord is consisting of the one, the three, and the five, Okay, in any major scale, we take the one, the three, and the five, that's our major chord. Now, when we add this seventh tone, we're gonna get um, a different sound. For example, this is the A major chord, okay? 
nice and solid and stable and happy. That's a major seventh chord. It's based on the major chord. It has all those same notes. It has the one, the three, and the five, but that seventh tone It gives it a dreamy quality. It's very much of a, you know, a little bit of nuance to the sound, which is great. We want to mix things up sometimes. Now, what is the major seventh arpeggio? Well, we're just going to look at this major scale that we already took. All we're going to do is take this one. No, we're not going to do the two. We're going to do the one, the three, the five, the seven, the one, the three, the five, the seven, the one. That's all we're going to do. We don't care about the two or the four or the six. And I mapped it out for you here. When you take those notes, and you get rid of the two and the four and the six, you get this. Now, if I was to play this, again, I could play this anywhere on the fretboard, but if I was to use the fifth fret as my home bass, as my lowest root note, okay? You see it says lowest root note right here. If that was, in this example, to be the fifth fret, put my middle finger on it, and then you just play these from low to high, meaning we go to the one, then we go to the three, and the five, and the seven, and the one. I'm talking about the scale degrees here on the fretboard map. And we can keep going. Okay, one, three, five, seven, one, one, three, five, seven, one. Okay, that's using the scale degrees. Now, if we were to use guitar tabs, if that's of interest to you, you could just map these out and say, okay, if, if this is the fifth fret right here, if this is fifth, and this is fourth, and this is sixth, and this is seventh. So we're gonna do, let's start right here and then go up, okay? Fifth fret, fourth fret, and seventh fret on the fifth string and then 6th fret and 7th fret on the 4th string, 6, 5, 4, 5, okay? Again, this major scale lesson I did, whoa, hey now, I'm very zoomed in. This major scale will teach you all about finger positions if that's new to you as well. Basically, when we're dealing with a 4 fret mapping like this, the main idea is you want your four left hand fingers, index, middle, ring, and pinky, to map to the frets being used. So for the A major seventh arpeggio, fifth fret, you see right here, is going to be played with our left middle finger, and then you just follow, follow the finger mappings. Now, this took me a lot of practice to be able to do this as fluently as I just did. The first day or two, I was stumbling quite a bit, so don't feel bad, especially as you have to go between your left pinky and your left ring. Um, but the cool part is, you could take that same shape and move it up, starting on the 10th fret. Okay, following these same finger mappings. And I actually have this written out here. Okay, this is the same tab showing you a major seventh arpeggio. These notes played individually based on the A root note and based on the D root note. Okay, this is the A root note, this is the D root note. These patterns, these tabs I have written out, they're following the same pattern. Okay, that's the A major seventh arpeggio. Whoops. And that's the D major 7th arpeggio. Even though the numbers of the frets are different, they're all using this one pattern. Okay, so that's the main idea here, is you learn this pattern once, you can use it anywhere on the fretboard. Now in this lesson, I'm only going to be using it based on the 5th fret root note for the A major 7, and the 10th fret root note, and that's for the D major 7. Okay, so that's basically the building blocks we're going to be using. Again, check out this lesson if this stuff's new to you, okay? Um, and I can do a deep dive there. Now. I do have a backing track, and I'm going to be using that in the rest of the lesson as I show you each of these riffs. Here's how the backing track works. I play A major 7th chord and a bass note and a drum and everything for four measures. Then I do a D major 7 chord with a drum and a bass note and everything for four measures. The main idea here is when the A major 7 is being played, you want to play the A major 7 riffs I'm going to show you. And I have these written out in the rest of the PDF. See how it says arpeggio riff for A major 7. Arpeggio riff for A major 7. Okay, These are the riffs that are going to sound good when the A major 7 chord is being played. When the D major 7 measures are being played, you're going to play the D major riffs. So let me just show you the backing track now. Kind of Listen to it, hear what I mean. Okay, 
when I hit play, it's going to start immediately. So one, two, three, four. Okay, that's three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two and three and four. D major seven now. Okay, four measures of this. Two, three, four, one, two, and it all repeats. This is A major seven. I could just play an open A major seven chord. It's gonna sound good, right? And a D major seven. Don't worry about the actual strumming here. You're never gonna strum in this lesson. Okay, so let's just start with this simple one right here to get things started. I just played this. We're about to switch to D major seven, so now let's play that. do this one more time, okay? This is just a low to high scale, or arpeggio. Doesn't sound musical yet, but the idea is to get you comfortable with this backing track. It's just four measures repeating, like I said, D. When you're learning these scales for the first time, I would recommend doing what I'm doing right here. You could even go slower. Major seven. Oops. So that's basically the, the, the building blocks for how the rest of this lesson is going to work, right? I'm going to show you a bunch of these licks and we're going to play them over the backing track, right? But so far, what I've just sort of given you is that crash course in how the backing track works and how the arpeggio notes work. Um, it is gonna require you to be able to generally play the notes that I just showed you here. You don't always have to do them from low to high, because again, that's not very musical sounding, it just sounds like a scale we're practicing, but these are the sort of building blocks we're gonna use. Now again, if fingering, finger position is tough for you, spend time looking at this again. This is the idea that when we're, in the, when we're doing the A major riff, all we really care about is keeping our hands on these frets, right? Between four, four, five, six, seven, okay? Index, middle, ring, pinky. And then for D, it's nine, 10, 11, 12, okay? So these are generally where our fingers are gonna be, okay? So let's get into this though. I'll talk more about fingering in a little bit when it comes to actual specific riffs, but let's get into teaching you these uh, riffs one by one now. And at the end, you're gonna be able to sort of Make up your own, and that's a great part. All right, so this first riff we're gonna look at is um, figure two, from low to high in groups of three. So a couple minutes ago, I just showed you playing the basic arpeggio. It almost sounds like a scale, right? When you're sort of doing this for the A and doing this one for the D. It can sound very unmusical though when you're playing a scale from low to high. It sounds like practice, and in a way where you want it to sound a bit more musical. You wanna bring some phrasing and some expressiveness in there. So this first one, what it's gonna do, and I'll play it a couple times without the backing track, then I'll put the backing track on. So we're basically gonna group things into three, okay? So let's first, let's look at the A major seven here. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna basically go. So what's happening there? I'm basically doing things just three notes at a time. One, two, three, rest. One. Rest, rest. I guess I need to fix that right there. This should be, um, I'll just fix it on the fly before we, uh, before we go. And this will be fixed in the, actual, in the actual PDF that I put out. So don't worry about that. This is gonna be a five. So the idea here, again, four, five, uh, five, four, seven, seven, six, seven, seven, six, five, five, four, five. Okay, we could do the same thing for the D major seven, starting on the 10th fret. So with this, again, it's bringing in simple phrasing. Instead of do, 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 just a constant stare, it's like going in little bursts here. So, and if you want to visualize it using this fretboard, you can. The first cluster is this, right? One, three, five. Then we're gonna go five, seven, one. This is scale degrees. Then we're gonna go one, three, five again. Then we're gonna go five, seven, one. 
Okay, so those are the scale degrees we're gonna use. Let's put on the backing track now and we can hear this in action. All right, let's start it here. Okay, so again, it might not be the most musical thing in the world, but it is a way to sort of practice these scales or these arpeggios in a way where we're going from low to high, but we're doing it in a way that's a bit more expressive. And when you're practicing this yourself, I would encourage you, you could just do certain clusters over and over. I just did the bottom. What I did there was I played this one three times and then this one once. And that way, it's sort of shortening. I'm, I'm only having to keep my hand on the thickest three strings. Okay, and you can do that on the D as well. You can do the same thing using the... Uh, clusters up here. We could do this three times and then this once. That would sound like this, right? Again, not necessarily the most musical thing, but it's a way to practice it without having to do the whole scale from bottom to top. Let's keep going though through these because I want to show you some other ways you can do it. This is one where we're basically going to go, um, we're going to do four and then three, and then four, and then three. So if we played that without the backing track, that would sound like this, right? Um... So we're kind of going up, you know? We're going uh, up and then back down, right? And then up, and, we're, and then we're resting. And resting is important with musical phrasing because you want to have chance for that silence to come in, right? Let me put on the backing track and I'll play along with this one. And let's do it. <laughs> dun, 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 mess up, all good. Ooh, improvising. Improvising is okay. If you sort of are playing some notes and you your ear wants to do something, your fingers want to do something, and you feel confident that it's using the building blocks that are okay to use, do it. Deviate from the tab, right? So that's what I did right there. So that's uh, figure three. It's just doing groups of four and groups of three. Now let's move on to figure four. This is parallel octaves. And this is showing you this idea of you can do a little riff here. You, met, you see in the pink, I have it circled using those notes, and the green is using those notes. But the cool thing is, we're basically gonna be doing the same phrase, just an octave low, then an octave high. So in this case, it's going to be, okay, one, three, five, seven, one, seven, one. And then up here would be, one, three, five, seven, one, seven, one. One, three, five, seven, one, seven, one. One, three, five, seven, one, seven, one, okay? So if we put the backing track on, we could hear that one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, da, 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 da. D. One more time. D major seven. Okay, so that's figure four. And again, this idea of whatever riff we play in this pattern, 
If we do it down in the lower octave, we can repeat it up in the higher octave, it'll sound good. So let's do one now that's not starting at the very bottom and going up, right? All the ones so far are starting low and they're sort of going high. But let's do it one where we start at the very top and this one only uses three notes. So this one, it's going to be... Okay? One, 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 seven, five. One, 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 seven, five. It's the D major seven. Okay, let's put the backing track on. This one's nice because it sounds nice and bright and high, but it only uses three notes. So if we did the beginning, that would sound like this. You get the idea. Three notes, but it can have a bit of the character of that major seventh. Okay, that's the seventh tone. So that's a cool one. Figure six, check this out. We're gonna do the same thing we just did, but with a D major seven, we're gonna end it differently. See this right here? D major seven, we're gonna start the same way. Right, this 10th fret to 9th fret to 10th fret, okay? We're gonna do that three times. But the last time we play, we're gonna go 10, 9, 10, 9, 10, and then slide from 10 to 12. So that's gonna sound like this. Okay, 10, 9, 10, 9, 10. Okay, let me play that one in context for you. But the idea is we're gonna do this slide just before we switch back to the A major seven, and it's gonna sound really cool. Check this out. Okay, D major seven. One more time. Here it comes. I'll repeat that. A major seven right now. Here it comes. Okay, what I want to say here is that this 12th note, this 12th fret note, is not in the arpeggio, and I note that here. What is this note? Well, if we know our major scale and our 12 notes, this is basically a whole step away from the one, and the answer is it's the two, it's the second degree of the scale. So we're basically going from the first degree to the second degree of the scale. Now, I think this sounds good because this note is an E note, and an E note is in the A major and the A major seven chord and scale. So it basically, it's just, it, this is a note that sort of hints at where we're going to, which is the A. So I wanted to include that example there where it's okay to break out of the box sometime. Now this next one's gonna be about embracing the slides. What I mean by that is sometimes when you're playing with building blocks and you only have a few building blocks, it can sound the same all the time, but if you add some slides, it adds a lot of expressiveness and everything. So the idea with this one is we're gonna be on the seventh fret of the fourth string. Now this is super similar to what we were just playing. You'll just notice it's an octave lower than this one, right? This one is using seventh and the, the one, the seven, the five up there. This one's using the one, the seven, the five on the fourth and fifth string. But here's the deal, is we're gonna do some heavy sliding here and here, okay? And it's gonna sound like this. By sliding, I just mean we're gonna we're gonna put our finger further down the neck, play the note, and then end up on whatever the number is. So in this case, it's seven. We want to end up on seven. Also, I want to talk call out. We're using our middle and our index fingers here because we're only really worried about going one note away from each other. We don't need to use our pinky, right? Earlier in the scale. I have you using the ring and the pinky on these frets right here. But because 
these are the only frets we're playing, we can use our more dominant fingers. This is how I approach it at least, our middle and index, right? So let's put this one on. I'll do the backing track and really lean into those slides, all right? So... Figure eight, what I want to do here. Fifth, the seventh, the first, the third, okay? I'm sort of re familiarizing myself with the notes we're gonna need. Now let's look at the tab. Okay, so we go. Let's play it. Okay, so that one I'm doing these sort of like um, bends on the note. See how you have that squiggly line on the sixth? You can either bend the string, kind of do some, I don't know if it's uh, not, not, not tremolo, but kind of, you're kind of just giving some, some character to that note. You can try that on the 11th fret also. That's one thing you can do. I just wanted to show one with those four notes. Now, here's this idea where you can write your own. Okay, so there's a couple that I wrote out yesterday. I, I wrote up this original PDF the other night and I was going to bed and I was hearing these riffs in my head when I was trying to sleep. So this first one here. So this first one I have written out comes from this idea of using double stops where you're gonna play two notes at the same time. So in the thinnest two strings, That's one thing you could do. Now this second of my custom written riffs here is using this idea of double stops again. And then I'm doing a slide from the. And I'm using open notes here, open strings, because the fifth string open is A, so it just sounds good. Right, and then we do repeat it. When we go to the A, or we go to the D, we want to let the fourth string open. But, but, uh, but when we end the D for the last time, we're going to do the fifth string open. Okay, so that's a cool thing you can do. Now this last one I have here.
So super similar with the double stops, but I'm just sort of finding another sort of approach to the rhythm of it. Okay, so lots of fun you can have there as well. Um, but I left in my PDF, the last page is blank for you. You can write in your own riffs. My approach, my uh, suggestion again is take this arpeggio. Get generally comfortable with it. Just try to have the positions of the notes memorized, even if you're not fluent from top to bottom. But then find these little pockets. Just take three of the notes. Find some phrasing you can do. Then move it to the D7, the D major 7, and then you repeat it, right? So lots of fun you can have there. Again, get the PDF on over at my website, lesson390playsongnotes.com. Um, hope this is helpful. This sort of thing has been very helpful for me just working out, um, getting comfortable with this. So what I want to close with is just play the backing track and I'm going to sort of improvise using some of what I showed you already and I might deviate and go off the course a little bit. I'm not going to tab all this out necessarily if I do improvise because I've given you the building blocks and it should be pretty straightforward hopefully to um, sort of understand the spirit of what I'm doing. All right, so thanks a lot for watching y'all and uh, let's get into this one. Start it over and have some fun.
All right, so that was one playthrough of the backing track. It's about three minutes and 12 seconds long. So not super uh, extensive there. But again, this is just a fun way. Take a pattern. Whatever you play in the fifth fret, you can play it up here in the 10th fret. Okay, and that's the cool part. And then of course you can improvise and everything. But this has been a fun one just to chip away at day after day. So I hope this is helpful for y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Again, get this over at my website, playsongnotes.com. It's less than 390. And I thank you all very much for watching. Until next time, my friends, bye-bye.